yeah, it was just one of those moments where I had put myself in the right place somehow and had some of the best legs in the day and attacked away with one other guy towards the end and then, you know, dropped him on the last flat section and found myself you know, about to win my first race. So that was uh, kind of a surreal moment and that put me in yellow and I was able to thankfully uh, rely on my really strong teammates to help me maintain that one for the next six days. All right, so first off, what's your name and who do you ride for? Yeah, my name is Cameron Piper. I ride for the UCI team, Team Illuminate. What is your full-time job? So my full-time first job is I'm a product manager for the road team at Specialized Bicycle Components. So I spend most of my day in the office there at Morgan Hill, working to make the next generation of the fastest bikes in the world. And so how many hours roughly a week are you putting in to that job? It's a tough one because it's we're a global company, so I'm interacting with both our colleagues in Asia and Europe, as well as everyone in the US, so it's anywhere from, I feel like I never turn it off, but you know, 40 to 80 hours a week, you know, depending on what we're doing, really. Does that work include riding bicycles? Sometimes, yeah, there's uh, the fun element of the job sometimes is to get the field test of the new product that we have. So it's a big benefit from that perspective to still get to ride a little bit more while you're, you're actually working. So I'm always testing something when I'm riding just because I am one of the guys in the office that does ride a bit more. How do you manage the travel with your full-time work? Like how, what does your job think when you go to do tour of China or whatever? Yeah, it's a challenge. It's important to be working with your colleagues closely and in person, so a lot of times it's, um, I do have to make a hard choice whether or not I can actually make it to a race. But usually when I do go to a race, I don't have a chance to go there early and climatize the same as some other guys would or, you know, finish the race and spend a couple extra days there seeing the area. So I typically fly in maybe the day before race and fly out the evening after the last stage. But at the same time, you know, with the internet, with email, it's really easy to stay connected and I commit myself to making sure that I'm available um, in most hours of the day, really, um, which sometimes can affect the racing, but it's important because that's, you know, my priority. And at the same time, too, we have other markets that are important to see, so I can tack on a trip to some of our supplier, suppliers over in Asia, or if I'm in Europe, I can go see some markets and other um, people that specialize to kind of make that trip a little bit more than just um, a trip for racing or something like that. How did you get into cycling? Uh, I don't always like to admit it, but my background was triathlon. Uh, back in high school, I bugged my dad a little bit to go do a local triathlon race. Got my first road bike. Uh, that was when I was maybe 15. We got a little bit more serious about triathlon, and then as I graduated high school and went to college, I got a coach and was on a small team on the East Coast and got relatively serious with it. But when I moved to California, Back in 2014, the riding was so good out here that I kind of just stopped swimming and running and, and uh, committed myself to just riding bikes. And a big benefit working at Specialized because there's so many fast guys there. And then also the fact that we're in California where the weather's the same all year round, especially in the Bay Area, that the riding came pretty easily and naturally and worked my way up through the USC cycling ranks. What is the pinnacle so far of your career? Yeah, um, it all kind of depends on who shows up for a race. So we race all over the world. The last two years we've raced in Colombia where there's been four or five other World Tour teams there. So it's kind of a cool experience to get to race against the guys that do go off to the Tour de France or even people that I work with at Specialized on Quick Step, for example. Um, and getting to race with them has been pretty cool. What's your most accomplished result? Uh, I won a race in China this year, Tour of Taiyuan. It was, um, it was only a 2.2 race, so it wasn't considered a pro win. The first stage was kind of the queen stage, which is crazy for a race like that. But it was 200 kilometers, 4,000 meters of climbing. And we all talked about it and we're like, okay, the break's not going to go until the first climb. But 10K into the race, I was in a move. And then next thing you know, we had nine minutes on the field. There was like 20 of us. And that was even before the first climb. Yeah, it was just one of those moments where I had put myself in the right place somehow. And had some of the best legs in the day and attacked away with one other guy towards the end and then, you know, dropped him on the last flat section and found myself you know, about to win my first race. So that was kind of a surreal moment and that put me in yellow and I was able to thankfully uh, rely on my really strong teammates to help me maintain that one for the next six days. So that was one of my proudest moments and then, you know, even some smaller stuff with Taiwan KOM Challenge, for example, racing against some 
world tour pros or things like that and still being competitive or i don't think results are always the thing that you're most proud of i think there's the moments that something happens where you feel like you just gave everything you had and maybe your teammate wins or your team wins in some way and those are the moments that you kind of relish to make all the training worth it so then i think what a lot of people want to know is how do you find time to train uh while you have a full-time job but not just not just train but actually train in a way that allows you to stay at this level and have this level of, of fitness so i think one exciting opportunity they had when i was signing for team illuminate was they wanted to offer me a coach uh, and i knew that that previous year in 2016 i had a lot of success so i was I won the national championships in time trial. I was winning a bunch of local races, California state titles, that kind of stuff. But I didn't have a coach then. I was just riding as much as I possibly could and as hard as I possibly could, which is not always smart. So by actually getting a coach in 2017, I was able to better manage my fitness and fatigue and have someone else that was properly watching that and monitoring it. So everything that I do typically throughout the season is pretty pointed. So I'm always doing some sort of workout or there's no real, hey, just go ride your bike for three hours. It's more like, you know, you have your, your endurance rides or intervals, stuff like that. So every day at lunch, it's specialized. Most people go out for a ride. So I use that time for a quick set of intervals or some sort of specific training for an hour and a half or so. Uh, and then my weekends are just my long rides. So managing the time that I have and the time that I have to ride to actually get in some good quality riding has been the biggest benefit for me, especially with having a coach to tell me exactly what that is. So roughly on average, how many hours a week are you putting in on the bike? Yeah, it's kind of changed over the last few years as we've evolved whatever my fitness is, but it's anywhere from 12 to 18 or 20 hours. So my big weeks in this past off season were around 20 hours a week. So quite a bit of riding. You know, some days were two days. I'd wake up in the morning, go ride before work, ride at lunch and then um, ride long the weekends or wake up before as the sun came up, four in the morning, get three hours in before work, that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a balance, but yeah, my, my weekly training volume is not necessarily as much as most guys, but it was pretty much all specific training. So that's why the volume was maybe lower, but still beneficial. Are you saying 20 hours a week is low volume? For most professionals, yeah, guys that are doing it full time. Um, that's not necessarily low volume, but it's it's not, it wouldn't be the highest volume for those guys. Like they can still get in 30 hour weeks or something like that, where that's something that I just can't do with the time that I have. Out of that 20 hours, how many hours is that is, is hyper-focused? The majority of it has some sort of prescription to it. I could have like a six hour ride, but I'm just supposed to ride at a certain effort. So even though it's a long, long effort, it's um, kind of more metered versus just going out and trying to smash yourself or go do a group ride where you're kind of noodling around or something like that. So depending on the week, the majority of that time is actual prescribed training, but just not all high intensity or specific intervals or something like that. Why put so much time into cycling when you have a full-time job? Yeah, it's, well, bikes are obviously a passion. Uh, my work is bikes as well. So it's in some ways a benefit to have your passion be whatever you're working on because oftentimes things at work don't feel like work. It's what I want to do to help push my personal goals or whatever I'm working on and getting some sort of other achievement other than just my career. So when you get to go race in different places in the world, you get to go interact with other people, you get to go contribute to something that's maybe a little bit bigger than yourself, just the same things you would with a full-time job. To me, that's makes everything worth it, all the hard days and whatnot. When you go have that one moment of glory or one moment of, uh, you know, your teammate pulling off their win, that's a super big one for the team. Um, all that stuff is, is always worth it in the end um, to just push yourself to be something bigger than you are. Because your average Joe, 20 hours is going to blow him out. Mm -hmm. So at what point does 20 hours become not so bad for you and you have energy to do other things? Yeah, uh, my first year in 2017, I actually rode quite a bit less than in 2016. And I think that was my way of working with my coach to manage all the fatigue that you're building, even from just riding or work to. It wasn't an overnight thing. We didn't just try to kill myself and fit in all that time. It's the same thing when you start riding your bike. You know, a, a 10 mile ride seems like forever, but then once you do it a few times, it's really not that bad. You know, the first time you do 100 miles, it feels like it took you all day and you were just completely smashed. But 
over time you build yourself up to that not feeling like the same kind of effort because you're you're more fit and your body's a little bit more used to it and you're mentally more capable of handling that kind of thing. So I think I've worked myself up to just managing this constant fatigue or understanding that, hey, this is gonna be how I'm gonna feel tomorrow or I'm gonna get back off this flight after this race and have to get right on the ground running again the next morning. It bother me as much, but it's it was a progression. It wasn't just overnight. How big uh, has Zwift played in into your program now? Used Zwift a number of years back when it first came out, and that's when I wasn't necessarily training super focused. But but it's it's you know if you're riding for 45 minutes in the morning or something, you're riding 45 minutes. You don't have to get all your winter clothing on, and everything. You just hop on your bike and ride. So that's like fantastic from my perspective because then it's just when you are crunch your time, when you are trying to get in all your work and fit in other training, whatever or spend some time recovering, then you have just that prescribed amount of time to get on there and get it done. Have you ever done a Zwift race? Uh, I've done one and it's a challenge because you have those guys that do 900 watts for a couple minutes and you know, it's not possible, but um, I'm looking forward to this kind of off season to play around a little bit more in that space. And obviously esports is growing a lot. And I think for someone who is still working on a lot of the tactics of on road racing, I think I have an engine to potentially do well in some of those races. So I'd like to dip my toes in that this year and see what happens. One aspect of the entire program that you could, that you would suggest would be the most important that they embrace. Yeah, I think it, it all depends on what you want. So if, if you want to be someone who just loves to go out on the weekends and have a great ride with their buddies, then invest the time that it takes for you to enjoy that experience or invest the time that it takes to have the correct equipment for that. I think some people sometimes focus too much on a number of like, I can't be competitive unless I'm training for X hours or something or, and they stress about it and they think, you know, I'm never gonna be there just because I can't ride my bike for 30 hours or 20 hours or something like that. Um, I think it's important just to pick the moments of the day that you know you can schedule in something and not stress about getting in that time and find the enjoyment in it because the more that that training feels like it's stressing you out or putting some sort of, it's a detriment to your normal career, then you're losing a lot of the advantage and benefit of riding a bicycle. So just make sure you're always finding that moment of enjoyment and whatever you actually want to achieve. How big of a, a role does nutrition play in your program? It's huge. I mean, that's one thing that I worked on this year a lot and it's still something that I'm trying to figure out. It's clear that there's a serious benefit. Like that's the other piece of the training that people don't typically talk about. You can talk about intervals all day, but if you're not eating properly or fueling your body the way you should, or getting yourself in the right body composition, um, then you're never going to actually perform the way that you should. So that's something that takes someone you know, five, six years to even figure out hundred percent what works for them. Cause there's no one specific formula that's perfect. And, um, I fluctuated around this year with what actually is right and what's not. And I, couldn't say that I got it right, but it also changes your mood too. Cause when you're maybe starting a diet or if you're not properly fueling yourself, then you're going to be worse off in the office when you're sitting in your desk chair versus making sure you're getting in the, the nutrients that you need. And it's pretty apparent and obvious to, to see those differences when you're training too. So, but give me your kind of like typical, what, what do you do in a week? Usually get in the office, seven, seven thirty. have coffee and I'll have some sort of a protein shake or something that's more of a protein based meal. Obviously there's lots of office work, meetings, etc. And then mid morning I'll have something that's a little bit more carb focused prior to my training session at lunch. Uh, I'll go out at lunch, do my efforts, whatever they are for the hour and a half or so, come back and then have my lunch. Carbohydrate, protein focused, get back into work right after that meal. And then mid afternoon, it's more of a protein based shake or maybe some yogurt or something just to make it through the rest of the day or else you're gonna crash. So I could be leaving the office 6.30, 7 ish get home, make sure I have a good meal with lots of vegetables, some sort of protein, and try and relax a little bit because that's kind of my, my only time of the day that I have to decompress a bit, have some sort of pre-protein meal before I go to bed, so something with casein to make sure my body's still using the time that it has to recover and get ready for the next day. Um, so that pretty much repeats for the whole week and then come weekend time, the similar meal strategies for the weekends, but usually just starting off the day with something high in carbs because I'll go for a long ride, get in those five, six hours, depending on the weekend plans, come back, try and relax as much as possible because again, that's the only time that I have, and then uh, repeat again on Sunday and get ready for the next day. You get in the routine and get pretty used to it, so it's not so bad and 
it might seem kind of boring to some people, but you know, if you're focused on whatever your goals are for that year, for, for work or for riding, then it's, it comes pretty easy. And so it's like hard to get an honest answer from you because you work for Specialized, <laughs> but what is your thoughts on Specialized as a brand? And I mean, obviously you, you ride all their bikes. Like, is that, is that the bike to have? Yeah, I, I think a lot of times people look at the aesthetics of something and they look at the quick form factor of it or they take it for like face value. They don't really see all the work that gets put into something because the amount of investment that our companies put into a lot of the technologies that we've done or just the R&D or our labs in the office or labs all over the world really and to better understand both how to manufacture a road frame or any of our products, but also to better understand what riders really actually need. I can't imagine there's any other brand at the moment that's doing what we're doing. And that's not just, I'm not just saying that because I work for the company, but it's, I see everything and, um, and know really how passionate the people are too. So we don't ever change a color and tell you that it's brand new because there's this one different color or something on it. It's like whatever innovations put into the, the product, it's something that we derived from the need for a rider to enjoy their experience more or have that particular benefit when it comes to riding or racing, whatever they might be actually doing. And it's it's hard to compete. We ride other products sometimes and there are companies that absolutely make great products, but um, I don't see them putting the same kind of effort or investment into truly understanding the rider and creating something that contributes to the overall experience and enjoyment of riding a bicycle. What is your insider tip for the best bang for the buck? That's a good question. I think one benefit too is that if you look at a lot of lines, obviously most of the top innovation or top technologies are in the top end bikes. So it's not always attainable for most people, but those technologies trickle down the model line. And even in low level stuff, if you look at a, a lay, for example, the, the welding technology they have on those bikes and road frames is well beyond some other companies. It's not just taking a bunch of aluminum tubes and putting them together or steel tubes. It's always important to just understand what you want from the sport or you want from your experience and to not discount whatever the price tag is to that enjoyment. So I think the biggest mistake that someone can make is just, uh, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this, so I'm gonna get this super low end thing, maybe from a different brand, and then it's not the best experience that they want. So whatever we set our models at, like we don't just try to put worse parts on something to make it less expensive. We're putting quality parts that are for that price are hundred percent worth it and will help improve your ride experience. You know, Tarmac or NLA, you can get a pretty amazing build component wise for some performance that's, you know, getting close to whatever the top end stuff is for, for that value. So like NLA Sprint, those bikes are phenomenal. They ride pretty similar to like Avenge, for example, the aluminum frame and you can get some nice wheels or components on there for a lower price or even uh, Tarmac um, comp that shares similar features as our top end SL6 frames, but we changed some of the tube shapes just a little bit to make it a little more attainable at a different price point with some still great hydraulic components and, and shifting components. So how can people follow you? Follow uh, your story? I'm kind of bad about Instagram and social media at the moment. On my Strava, everything, all my Roger stuff are posts on there. I'm probably most active on my Strava. I think it's just Cameron Piper, but um, i trying to get back on social media. It's Cam underscore Piper, but yeah, it's probably the best place for those. Right on, man. Sweet, yeah. That was a banger. Mm -hmm.